Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The Word of God that I've chosen to share with you this morning as we continue our sermon series is taken from, again, the book of Acts. It's read by Pastor Welmer just a few moments ago. I share with you today at verse 36. They're going along the road. They come to some water. And the Ethiopian man says, Look, here is some water. What prevents me from being baptized? This is the Word of God before us this morning. Please be seated. A few years ago, Faith Christian High School in Grapevine, Texas, was playing a football game against the Gainesville State School. Now, the Gainesville State School is a maximum security prison facility. The players on their football team wear uniforms that are years and years old. They have none of their parents come and watch them play in the football game. They don't have a football stadium. They don't even have any cheerleaders. And they hardly ever win any football games. Well, one time, Chris Hogan who at that time was the coach of the Faith Christian High School football team, he asked the fans of his football team to go across the field to sit on the other team's side and to cheer for them. 200 of their fans were willing to do that. They went across the stadium sat on the opposing team's side and cheered for the Gainesville football team. It was really quite amazing. One of the Gainesville players said, most of the time when we come to play a football game, people are afraid of us. They look at us like we're criminals. I can't believe that these people actually cheered for us. Another player on the Gainesville football team said, there is no way I can think of to thank them enough. I can't believe that those people actually cared about us. The fans from the Faith Christian High School did one more thing that was really quite amazing. After the game was over, they gathered around the Gainesville bus and they gave to each of the Gainesville football players a little gift. The gift contained a hamburger, some french fries, some candy, a soda, a Bible, and an encouraging letter. The players from the Gainesville football team were all shocked by this. They couldn't believe it. That day, the Faith Christian High School fans broke down some walls and some barriers that had been separating them for years. I ask you today, do you set up walls and barriers against some people in your life? How about the teenager who has all of those tattoos? How about your rich boss who treats you so badly? How about that person who believes differently than you do about politics? <laughs> I wonder. Do you still today set up walls between some people and yourself? Let me give you a little background on the Word of God here before us today. The Jewish people in Jesus' day refused to have anything to do with people from the country of Samaria. These two cultures really disliked one another and they avoided each other at every opportunity. They literally put up walls separating one another. 
Well, Jesus came to this earth to break down the walls that separated people from one another. That's why we see so many places in the Bible where Jesus would go up to people whom everyone else would avoid. People nobody wanted to have anything to do with, and Jesus would show love and care to them. One time, Jesus sent a missionary named Philip to the people of Samaria. And when Philip went to those people in Samaria, Jesus instructed him to tell them about him. And that's what Philip did. He told those people in Samaria that Jesus died on a cross and rose from the dead for them. He told them that Jesus was willing to forgive all of their sins. He told them that Jesus was willing to give to them the gift of eternal life with him forever in heaven. Those Samaritan people had never, ever heard that before. They thought that Jesus only cared about his own Jewish people. But they came to find out that Jesus loved all people. Jews and Samaritans, all people. Jesus loved them alike. Well, Jesus had another mission for Philip. This time, Jesus told Philip to go to meet a man who lived in Ethiopia, who had recently been to the city of Jerusalem on a trip, and now he was going back home to his country in Ethiopia. Now, there were some big walls that separated Philip from this Ethiopian man. Philip was white. The Ethiopian man was black. Philip lived near the city of Jerusalem. This Ethiopian man lived way over in Africa. Philip was quite poor. This Ethiopian man was very rich. Philip had a family. This Ethiopian man had no family at all. Their lives were totally different, weren't they? Well, the Bible tells us that this Ethiopian man was reading from the book of Isaiah in the Old Testament. And as he was reading, he didn't quite understand what, what, was, what, what he was reading, and he asked Philip, who the prophet Isaiah was talking about here. And Philip told him that Isaiah was talking about the promised Messiah named Jesus who had come to this earth. He told him that Jesus had died on a cross, but then he had risen from the dead. He was alive. He told him that Jesus was willing to forgive all people's sins, including his. He told him that Jesus was willing to give to all people the gift of eternal life in heaven, including him. Well, this Ethiopian man is so excited about all this. He can't believe that Jesus could care about him. And he, he remembered that people who were believers in Jesus, a lot of times they were baptized into their Christian faith. And so he asked Philip if he could be baptized. And Philip said, sure, if you believe in Jesus. And the Ethiopian man said, I do believe Jesus is my Savior. And so Philip found some water and he baptized that Ethiopian man into the Christian faith. It was amazing. If we'd have been there, it would have been quite a scene. As far as we know, it was the first African man who had become part of the Christian faith. Wow. What is this word of God saying to you and me right here today? Well, it says that Jesus came to this earth to save all people from sin and death, doesn't it? It says that Jesus came to this earth to forgive all people of their sins. It says Jesus came to this earth to give to all people 
the gift of eternal life in heaven. It says that Jesus came to this earth to break down walls that separated people from one another. How does this practically happen for you and me here at Messiah Lutheran Church? Well, let me tell you. When you brought school supplies for children a month ago, you were breaking down walls. Just this past month when you brought some much needed supplies to abused women and their children, you were breaking down walls. In the next few months as we collect Thanksgiving boxes and Christmas gifts and give them to elderly folks and to families in need all around us in our community, you are breaking down walls. When you invited that person who looks a little different than you, who behaves a little different than you do, when you invited that person to your church here at Messiah, you were breaking down walls. Anytime you've ever shared the love of Jesus with somebody around you, you have broken down walls. So let me ask you, who are the Samaritans in your life? Who are the Ethiopian men in your life? Who are the people that you tend to avoid in your life? It's time to break down the walls that separate you from them. It's time to let that love of Jesus that's so precious to you be shared with somebody else. The next time you meet an Ethiopian man who is so different from you, don't ignore the person. Don't just walk on by him. Don't let race or gender or politics or geography or culture keep you from talking with them. Don't let these things hide the great love that God has for all of them. So here's the truth for today. When you cross the field and cheer for the opposing team, everyone wins. When you cross the field and you help someone who looks a little different from you, everyone wins. When you cross the field and you share that precious love of Jesus with someone around you, everyone wins. Imitate the missionary Philip in your life today. God can use you, just like he used Philip years ago, to make a big difference in this difficult world. God bless us all as we do that together. Amen. Let's now stand and joyfully sing together the next hymn of praise.